Good morning and welcome to the Minority Business Development Agency's Virtual Subs and Sandwiches webinar with the City of Houston. I am Marshat Turner, Director of the Houston MBDA. We are delighted to welcome back our government partner from the City of Houston today. Today's webinar will be recorded and all attendees will be in listen-only mode. There will be Q&A at the end of this session where my team and I will be asking the questions that you yourself type into the chat. We encourage you to type your questions as you think of them in an effort to maximize our time together today. Um, I am always delighted to have my entire team present today, and they are Ms. Deirdre Sutton, a business advisor, Ms. Tanya McGilbra, business advisor and alumni client engagement specialist, April Felton, program director of our pandemic recovery, Kimberly Vera, office manager of our pandemic recovery, Christina Cornelius, business advisor, and Waltonia Harris, business advisor. Again, today's presenter is the city of Houston, and I will now turn it over to Dr. Portia Jackson, also known as Dr. PJ. She serves as the business development manager with the city of Houston's office of business opportunity. Dr. PJ. Good morning, everyone, and thank you, Director Turner, for having me here and having the city of Houston here. I am happy and excited to share some information with everybody on how to do business with the city of Houston. So I'm going to go ahead and get my presentation up here on the screen so that you all uh, can see my slides. Yeah, and we can get started. Okay. So um, again, I'm Dr. Portia Jackson, Business Development Manager with the City of Houston's Office of Business Opportunity. And here is my information. I always like to start off with this so that you have my information, you have the QR code that will connect you directly to my LinkedIn profile. I will answer questions, connect you, say hello on LinkedIn. So make sure you connect with me on LinkedIn. The best way to reach me is either via that QR code on LinkedIn or an email. My phone number is also listed, but just keep in mind, I'm not always in the office. So if you need something immediate, that good email address is the best way to get a hold of me. So for those who don't know, the Office of Business Opportunity, we are the advocate for our small businesses here in the city of Houston. We are charged with ensuring that we are cultivating an inclusive and competitive, competitive environment, especially for historically underutilized businesses and our disenfranchised individuals through our workforce development initiatives. So our office can be best broken down into four facets. One, our OBO Solutions Center, and that is the center that you will call in or you can email. You can also go to our web page as well to find information about if you're curious about what permits do I need when I'm starting my business, if I'm doing my business and I want to do something else, what permits do I need? We can help you with that. We can also help you connect you to resources and just give you that background information uh, to help you with your business. We have our certifications division, which is the certifying agency for the city of Houston. And what that means is we certify in minority, woman owned, and a whole lot of different areas. And I got a slide on that later on. So we'll get into the certifications a little bit later, but just think about when you're wanting to work for the city of Houston or other departments or other uh, agencies, and even in the private sector, people are talking about certifications. And so we do that here and it is not no charge to be certified by the city of houston we also have our contracts compliance division which ensures that all of our certified firms who are working on city of houston contracts they're ensuring that everything is being followed and everything is in compliance so they're your advocate once you have been awarded a contract or once you have been awarded as a sub on a city of houston contract and then the last division and definitely not least because that's mine. That's the business development programming. And so I'm here and with the folks here, we make sure that you have all the resources that you need. And that goes into the education piece. We have different and signature programs that will help you start your business from our lift off business plan competition all the way to we call it our capstone, which is build up Houston, who are folks who have been in the business for a while. 
making a couple hundred thousand dollars, but you want to go to that million dollar, multi million dollar level. So we have programming from the beginning all the way up to when you're ready to grow and scale to help you make sure you have the not only just the education, the know how and the connections to really help you build your business network to make your business better and to grow and scale. So today we are going to be talking about doing business with the city of Houston. And so this is basically our agenda. I'm going to walk you through this entire process. So when we talk about doing business with the city of Houston, this is pretty much what it looks like. It starts at the top with vendor registration, and then it ends also at the top, ensuring that you are keeping your vendor registration updated. In the middle of that is research, and we'll get to that towards the end because I really want you to truly understand, though it has a few steps, this process, if you do not do your research, it's going to be very tedious for you. So this is our, our, um, our agenda, but this is also the process that I really want you to, to really key into, and we're going to walk through that now. So with the city of Houston, vendor registration, remember I said that's the first thing that you have to do. Also, another thing you want to keep in mind is that our strategic procurement division, that is the buying department for the city of Houston. We shorten it and call it SPD. So any projects you see go through that department, SPD. And so they issue the bids and proposals. They also authorize the price changes, process and release purchase orders, and they develop and maintain the term contracts. So when you want to do business with the city of Houston, your very first step is to become a registered vendor. You can do that at the website you see there which is purchasing.houstontx.gov. That is a major website here. Not only is that where you register to be a vendor, that's where you go to search for bids. That's where you can go and find a dictionary, a directory of all the folks that are um, buying things and, and selling things and also get a background of what is to come in the future for the city of Houston. So you want to make sure that that purchasing.houstontx.gov is a website that you can roll off your tongue just like I can because it's very important if you're interested in doing business with the city of Houston. So when you go there, you're going to click on uh, where it says new users or existing users for those who may already have been on the page. Uh, you wanna create your vendor profile. It's gonna ask you just for general basic information. It's also gonna ask you to scan your W-9 form. If you do not have a W-9 form, they have a form there on the website and you're gonna email it to the email address you see there. Then give them about 20, 24 to 48 hours during the work week, and then you can search to make sure that you have been listed as a vendor. It does not cost you anything to be a vendor with the city of Houston, but I will stress that you need to pick the appropriate NIGP codes that identify your business. Why? Because anytime there's a bidding opportunity, we categorize it by the NIGP codes. So if that if your NIGP code matches up with that opportunity, they're going to send you an email to notify you that here's an opportunity for you. A lot of folks miss out on that because they don't have the appropriate NIGP code. So every single product or service that you do, make sure you have that corresponding NIGP code listed in your vendor profile. So if you have any questions with your profile, you see the information down below, the Houston purchasing at houstontx.gov email address, as well as the phone number, and those folks will get you squared away. So next, we're moving to the next box, and that is the bid search. Again, like I said before, we're going back to that purchasing.houstontx.gov website. So when you are searching for bids, you go there. You can also sign up for the OBO's e-blast. We send out a weekly e-blast, comes out every Monday morning. We list all of the bidding opportunities, the bidding solicitations in our e-blast that are with the city of Houston, as well as our external partners. You can also check the Houston Business Journal on Fridays, the Municipal Access Channel during the week. And then if you're in construction, city departments, Houston Public Works, General Services Department and the Houston Airport Systems will list their construction projects over 500,000 directly on their website. However, their 
projects will still be listed on the purchasing.houstontx.gov as well as in our OBOE blast. It just gives you some various different mediums to make sure you're checking those solicitations. So once you check those solicitations, you want to make sure that you are attending the pre-bid conferences or pre-bid meetings. The solicitations will have that information. Some of our pre-bids are still virtual and some are actually in person. All the information will be provided on that bid. It's so, so, so important, especially if you are looking for subcontracting opportunities that you go to the pre-bid. That is your way, your avenue to network with other organizations, to network with your primes, to see who's going out for that bid so that you can make sure that you de develop a relationship with that prime and be listed on the bid when they su submit that to the city. Because you want to be proactive, because when the prime solicit submits the actual bid package to the city of Houston, they have to list who they're subcontracting the work out to. So you want to be proactive and make sure that you're listed in, in their bid when they submit it and not trying to find somebody or contact them afterwards once they've been awarded the contract to get on it because a lot of paperwork has to go into that and they can't replace you they can't replace somebody on that bid with you just because you've developed a relationship so always be proactive go to that pre-bid conference before you go to that pre-bid conference read the scope of work read that bid before you go if you need clarification, that pre-bid conference is where you ask those questions. The buyer is there, the buying department is there, as well as a contracts compliance officer is there, and some other um, City of Houston staff directly associated with that bid. So you have the connections there, but you also want to make sure that you are prepared. You want to bring your capability statement, especially if you're going for subcontracting opportunities, because you're going to network with the prime. You want them to list you on the contract on the bid when they submit it. So you want to make sure, one, that you know what you bring to the table for that scope of work. And you also want to make sure that you are abreast and you're ready to sell your business to that prime. So the type of solicitations the city has is we have uh, our smaller ones. So up to $3,000 can be purchased through a procurement card, P card, AKA a credit card. So any department that has a P card can make purchases from you, um, $3,000 or less. There's no bidding that goes up. There's no, um, most will get a couple of quotes, but if, if you have a relationship with them, if they know about you, heard about you, they need some uniforms, maybe they got some new um, staff members in and they need polo shirts, they can reach out to you and say, hey, we need two or three polo shirts. We pay with a P card and that's, and that's the uh, end of the transaction. So those are the smaller transactions that you can take advantage of, especially if you're just starting out. Then we have our informal bids, which are three to 50,000. And those have a different process. So those process, again, remember when I talked about your NIGP codes, when there's an informal bid, they'll send out what they call an e-bid. And so based on your NIGP code, they'll send you a notification. They're required to get quotes from two historically underutilized businesses before they can make the offer. The informal bids you will see on that purchasing.houstontx.gov website. You will not see anything 3,000 or, or less on that uh, bidding website. Your formal bids are gonna be $50,000 or more. So those are the ones that's going to, when we talk about having um, a pre-bid conference, and those are your larger purchases. And so you will have to submit the bid. Again, if you're a subcontractor, you won't submit a bid to the city of Houston but the prime who's going after to be the prime will submit that and have your name on it. And then there's also RFPs that come out, requests for proposals, and that's based on the expertise, on your expertise when you submit that. So these are the types of the solicitations that the city of Houston has. Again, the informal, formal bids and RFPs will all be on that purchasing.houstontx.gov website. And those um, are e-blast, and the municipal channel, uh, HBJ, you will see all those different types of solicitations listed there. The only thing you won't see is the P card. 
So when we talk about types of purchases, the city of Houston purchases about anything. Um, we had, uh, I just learned recently, the city purchased some goats. So um, when we talk about anything, we talk about anything. So I always tell people to really break down what you see. So if you see someone on the roads and you see a city of Houston truck and you see an employee, break down that, right? So we have an employee, so we know that they're probably getting paid benefits. So you know that there's opportunities that the city buys benefits. They also probably purchase training so that that employee can be trained. That employee is driving a city car. So that means the city purchases cars. And if the city purchases cars, they have to maintain those cars. So if you have a detailing shop or if you wash cars, change oil, think about all those different things when you break it down, when you just seeing that employee of what the city buys. Also think about that, that person that's out there probably is writing down something on some paper. The city buys paper, right? So we would look for paper. We would look for supplies, pens. We operate on computers, so we would need computers. So I think you get the point. And so when you're thinking about what does the city buy, we buy all those things to keep it operative. So I have a couple of samples here just to show you. So when you have our e-blast, this is what it will come in the form of. It will tell you construction, it will tell you when the bids due in the time. When you see that time, please adhere to that time. If it's due at 1030 and you submit your bid electronically at 1031, you are disqualified. It has to be before the time that you see, on or before 1030. Then you'll be able to get an insight about that particular bid. So if this one is a FY 2023 road uh, rehabilitation, you'll be able to, in our e-blast, click on that, that hyperlink, it will take you directly to the full scope of that bid and you can read it for yourself. But what this tells you right here is Houston Public Works is the one, the department that is requesting the bid. It's gonna be at a location that's citywide. Interested parties can contact the project manager. This is your key. When you see the project manager, when you see the buyer listed, that is your contact person for everything in concern with that bid. So make sure you utilize that person. It's a good chance to, a good opportunity to introduce yourself to that person. Find out information about the bid from them. Also, I always tell people when we talk about research, and we'll get to that a little bit in a couple minutes, make sure that you are keeping that person up to date with what you're doing because you want to know about bidding opportunities that may be coming down the pipeline as well. And so everything is about relationship building. But if you're looking for, ah, what's coming down the pipeline? What, what should I be looking out for? That buyer can give you that information. As well as if there's any questions after the bidding process, and maybe you put in a bid and you didn't make it, reach out to the buyer and see if you can set up a meeting to discuss, you know, what was wrong with your bid or why it why you were outbid it. Also, you'll see listed is a pre-bid meeting, and you can see that this one right here under this construction is um, virtual uh, pre-bid meeting. Even if it's virtual, I always tell people, make sure that you're introducing yourself in the chat. Make sure you ask a question. And when you ask your question, don't just say, yeah, I have a question about the scope of work. Start off saying, hello, my name is Dr. Porsche Jackson. I'm with XYZ Company. We do blah, 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 blah. Here's my question. You never know who's online, and especially if you're trying to network, you want to let people know what you do, and you always want to set that precedence that you have it together, that you know about the scope of the work, but you just have some questions because you never know that's your opportunity to network, and that's just one way to network when you're virtual instead of in person when you can actually walk up to someone and hand out your card. Um, the other examples here, it'll show you uh, goods and services that we purchase, and you can see that this one has the goal listed. So it says a 16% MWBE goal. Uh, and again, it has that contact person, the buyer. And then you can also see that we also have a request for proposals. And this one, again, it has a goal on here at uh, 25%. And so if we just were to click on one of those hyperlinks, this is what the invitation to bid would look like. So it would have all the information as far as when it's received uh, by the time. It also have here the uh, bid invitation number, but again, the NIGP code. So it says right here, 910-27. So if this is something that you do 
with non-hazardous waste collection, if you don't have this NIGP code, that's a hint that you want to go back to that vendor registration and make sure that you have you put that NIGP code. Because when you are bidding on something, if your NIGP code doesn't match what's in the bid, you will not be considered. And then we also see that this has a 16% MWBE goal. And so I just wanted to show you just a synopsis of what this looks like when you go in it. It has the buyer's information, all the information about the pre pre bid and um, some of these bids can be, I've seen it like two pages and some I've seen 172 pages. So you wanna just make sure that you go through it and you're looking at what's, what's there and definitely looking at the scope of work and seeing what's entailed and what they're requiring uh, for you to be able to bid on this project. And so once you, Bid on the project, if you're awarded, then it goes to the awarding policy. And again, that's monitored by the SPD department. Um, and they typically look for responsible and prices and make sure the prices are reasonable. It'll also tell you on the bid exactly what and how it's going to be measured uh, when you're uh, when they're awarding the, the contract. Also, you want to take advantage of the Hire Houston first which means that if you are in direct competition with someone else for the bid, all things equal, and even if you come up a couple percentage higher than that bid, then you would get the bid because you are a local firm. And then afterwards, then it's the payment process, and it's done through SPD, and the invoices are submitted, and again, all that information in that bid will um, will detail all of that. What you always want to make sure is that you read the bid because not every bid is the same and not the requirements are not the same. And I wanted to point that out because I do get some calls from people saying, oh, so what's the bonding for the city of Houston? Well, it depends on what the bid is asking for. So that's why you want to make sure that you read that bid so that you're prepared and you know exactly what they're asking for before you bid. And so I bring this back up our our agenda here. So we've talked about vendor registration, bid searching, the pre-bid conference, the contract bid, contract award. Then also you want to know that anytime, though Houston is a very large city, the community is small. So anytime you get an opportunity to work on a project, you want to perform at your best. You never want to to come in and 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 don't perform at your best, and then word of mouth begins to spread. So just make sure that when you have that opportunity to do well on it, if you come in as a sub, I always tell my subs, make sure that you're building that relationship with the prime. Just don't come in and do the work, and then like, oh, we did the work. You never know that prime may have some additional work for you. As a sub, your goal should be to be a prime one day. So what you wanna do is make sure that you're growing, able to grow your capacity and build your business so that you can one day be a prime. So it's really good for you to learn from that prime. There's a lot of paperwork that goes into just being a prime. It's not just performing the work. And so you wanna get be privy to that information and begin to network and build your, your network as a, a good performer and build your reputation as well. And then once the project is completed, again, there's a payment. Again, when we go back to the scope of work and the contract, it'll lay out the payment terms of that particular contract. And so once you are performed on a project, again, if there's anything that may have come up and you're saying, oh, we also do this service, then you wanna make sure that you also update your vendor registration profile so that you are privy to all the opportunities available in association to what you actually uh, produce or perform. And so now when we talk about research, what was our yellow button in the middle? One way you can research is by going to the purchasing.houstontx.gov website. And so I have it circled here. Leave the status open blank just like that. And then you can put in keywords. So if you do uniforms, you can put in uniforms. And what it will do is bring up all the current and past bids. This is really important because this is how you do your research. You want to make sure that what you do is what the city buys, and then you want to look at the buying patterns of the city. 
you want to look at the buying departments. So you'll see here on this slide, it gives you the bid number, yes, it gives you the bid description. You can click on that hyperlink, it'll give you all the information associated with the bid. It will also give you everyone a list of everyone who attended that pre-bid conference as well and any amendments that have been made to that bid you will find it there it'll also let you know uh, as well as right here the number of hits for that particular bid this chart also tells you which departments uh, wanted this bid or who this this bid is for the due date and the time left, and it'll also have the buyer information. So we talked about how important the buyer email is. So I won't uh, say that again, but you have all the information here. So this is how you can do your research and finding that. So if we're looking at this and if I sell uniforms and I know, okay, so the fire department buys uniforms, the police department buys uniforms and, and caps and, and patches. And then, so if I'm looking here, I'm seeing, okay, that was in 2003, 2002, 2001. What have they purchased recently? So we know that the contracts here might be some very long contracts. So I wanna be privy to when these contracts come out because I know that they don't come out that often, right? So that's one way to do the research is by using this purchasing.houstontx.gov and you can always use it put in your keywords as far as what you do whether it's landscaping construction concrete whatever you can put it there and you'll be able to see the patterns who's buying it and um and more information so it'll also give you you can look at the former bid if it's a, a closed bid look at that bid because that's going to give you insight of when it comes out again what it's going to look like so you can make sure that you are prepared and you have all the information um to do it because sometimes the bids they give you two weeks sometimes it could be four weeks but we know that it takes some time so you always want to be abreast of what they're going to be asking for and what type of company they're looking for to perform it and this is another uh, avenue to do the research this website is houston.mwdbe.com and so just like if we put in apparel and uniforms we can do a search and this will tell us who was awarded the contract so we see here that this was for apparel and uniforms for various departments. And this number right here was the solicitation number that you would have seen on the previous screen. It gives us the contract number. Right here is the, the department that asked for the service. So we know this is SPD. And because we know that SPD is the main buying department for the city of Houston, they're acting on behalf of all the various departments that needed whatever the apparel and uniforms was. It's an open contract. We see the date here. We see who the prime contractor is. We come down. We see how much the contract was worth. We see that the contract also had 11% goal on it. And this is what that equated to. We also see that though it had 11% goal on it, they've made this amount in payments, 23,000, which equates to 35.3%, which means that they are above their 11% goal. This gives us a process here. Census is 54% complete with the project. And look at this, it's the subcontractors. This is their, their completion, 174%. What this tells us is that though that they receive the contract, they pretty much sub most of the work out. It lets us know that Census is not a certified firm. And here's the subcontractor that they had on the this contract this person is certified and then you can see how much they have here uh listed right here so they had one subcontractor and that subcontractor um pretty much got all of that twenty three thousand. so what this tells us also one we can look at the contracts and see so the amount so if you're doing something apparel uniforms you can say oh, okay so they had a contract for 123,000. Is that something that I'm interested in? Some folks may say that's a good contract. Some folks may say I don't do work for over for anything less than 200,000. Well, then you know that maybe this is not the platform for you. But also it lets you know the goal. And also I tell people to pay attention to how the percentage of what the subcontractor gets. So if you see centers here and you see that they are above the goal, that tells you that's a pretty good company to work for because they don't mind utilizing their subcontractors beyond what they're supposed to do. 
because sometimes you'll see some some primes may struggle with uh, meeting those goals. And so when we're talking about building relationships, start looking at the primes too to see what relationships you would like to build. And then also use this as an opportunity if you're coming in as a sub, who's your competition? So if you're trying, you're applying, um, you are supplying uh, uniforms and you're in that space, and census, you know, well, that's a prime, that's your competition. But if they're using this um, DJ and Alfonso Enterprises who does screen printing, it looks like that's a competition for you. So you, this is letting you know who's getting the jobs. And sometimes as you go into this system, you'll see that sometimes the prime uses one sub and sometimes that sub ends up being a prime too. So this just gives you more information about who you're competing against and you can then know about your your competitors also if you know that that's a prime anytime they're going to be somewhere maybe you want to be there if you're trying to build a relationship and be a sub on a particular contract that they have and you can do this with all of the contracts but i just want to use this as an example also uh, keep in mind when we're talking about doing business with the city not all of the departments are major buying departments. So we have SPD, which we I described earlier. You also have general services department. That's our department that manages all of the city properties. And when I say that, we are scattered in buildings all over downtown and throughout the city. And so if you are into construction, remodeling, janitorial services, um, a and E services, general services department is one department you want to keep your eye on. Houston Public Works is our largest department, and um, they handle anything from the Houston roads that you may see out there, you know, working on the bridges, uh, also utilities, as well as the sewer and drainage. And if you're in Houston, you know your water bill comes from Houston Public Works, right? So anything dealing with that with design and construction and repair of our streets, our bridges, our roads, and also capital projects is under Houston Public Works. And then another major buying department is our airport. So anything dealing with our airport, whether it's construction, whether it's aviation services, whether it's having an actual space in our airport. So you look at the restaurants and um, I think there's a, a Sephora or make some type of makeup store that's in one of the, the um, airports. So anybody that has space in the airport, that is doing business with the airport. That goes up for bid as well, just like a construction project would, just as something needing supplies would as well. And so what I want to really drive home is that these are the four major dep buying departments with the city of Houston. If you see that they are going to be at some event, then you know that you, if you believe that you can provide service to one of these departments, then you know that's the event you want to go to. Because you do want to get in front of those buyers. You want to find out the information that they're privy to as far as what's coming down the pipeline. But also, sometimes uh, I know the departments, if they need something ad hoc and they need uh, to reach out and they need to find a hub firm or they need to find a certified firm or find a firm in general, having built that connection with that buyer is going to help you. So again, not all departments have outreach where they go out and they talk about their services. That's why I'm here because for my office, we speak on behalf of the city of Houston for these services. But anytime you see that one of these departments are out at an event and that's some uh, they offer, you offer a service or a product that they purchase, you want to make sure that you're there. Also, I wanted to show you this chart that just kind of breaks down um, how the departments buy. So this lists the departments. And I bring this to your attention too, because some folks just say, I want to do business with the city, and they're not really keen on who, and they say, oh, I want to do business with city council. Okay, so if we look at city council, this is the third one. We can see they've made two purchases. Are you really wanting to spend your space trying to do business with city council? Right? Opposed to look at some of these other ones. Fleet management, over 263.35, you know, 298 contracts that they have out. And you can go down the list and see. Of course, you'll see again 
Houston Public Works has 733 awards that they've made. But this gives you an idea of, okay, so these are the, the, the departments in the city of Houston that are buying. Where do I put my efforts at? And this information, this report, as long as with some other reports or graphs that you want to look at are available on our website. We're a public entity. All that information is there for you to do your research. Uh, and you can get this from our website, which is HoustonTX.gov slash OBO, and you'll see it at the top under reports. So now I want to move into the certification. We talked about it a little bit earlier. So this, these are the areas that we certify in. Minority business enterprise, woman owned, small business. I want to bring it to your attention. Our small business, our SBE is construction related industries only. Construction related industries only do we certify for the SBE. Then we have PDBE, which is persons with disabilities business enterprise. And also, if you are a, um, a veteran, a disabled vet, you would fall under the PDBE as well. DBE is disadvantaged business enterprise that is race and gender neutral. And then we also have ACDBE, which is airport concessions, disadvantaged business enterprise. And so just a quick uh, certification lesson. When you go to apply for a certification, you see it here at the top. These four, one, these four right here are gonna be on one application. These two in the middle of these DBEs right here are going to be on another application. On this application here with the MWS PDBE, you can apply for hub as well. You'll just check the box hub and um, by completing one application, you can get all these applications plus the hub. By completing this application, you can get both the DBE and the ACDBE. So spend your time wisely when you do these applications that when you apply for the MBE, if you qualify for the other ones, just check the box and say you want those two. That way you do one application and you can get up to um, five certifications from that. Also, we have a partnership with the LGBTQ so that that um, the LGBTQ BE certification that's offered through the chamber. Uh, will be listed on our certified directory. And so that's one of the benefits of being certified with the city of Houston is that you are listed in our public directory. Folks of different forms and types and wherever they live, California, wherever, if they're looking to work with a certified firm, whether they're in the public sector or not, they go to our directory to find a firm based off of the certification. Also, by being certified, it's accepted throughout the city and uh, the nation. So you get certified with us and it will account for other uh, opportunities for you. And just to point out that our certified firms uh, last fiscal year, we reached over 32 percent, which equated to 60, 662 million went to our certified firms. And then at the top of the box, you'll see the goals. Typically on construction contracts, a million plus, it's going to be a 34 percent goal. For goods and services, over 100K, it's going to be 11%. And for professional services, anything requiring a professional license, think um, architecture, engineering, legal, it's going to um, be a 24% goal. And these are the standard goals. Not all the time will it be that amount, but this is the standard for those goals on those contracts. And we have it set up now that even as a certified firm, if you're a prime, you can perform up to 50% of that goal that's on that contract. And again, uh, this chart can also be found in the report section that I uh, just described earlier to you. So when you're doing your research, this kind of gives you an idea how many firms have been certified in, in those particular areas. And you can look at the amounts that they, the average amount per vendor that's been awarded to make sure that is this lucrative for your business to be a part and go after government uh, city of Houston contracts. And this is just another chart that breaks it down from prime and subcontractors and also the P cards that you can see $16 million uh, was awarded or was purchased through POs and, and P cards. So if you have the ability with your, with your organization, with your company that you are able to supply in smaller amounts, um, again, that's another opportunity for you to begin to do business with the city of Houston as well. And then it breaks it down here as far as uh, ethnicity 
and the types of contracts for construction professional services and goods and services. And then this gives you an idea of our contracts compliance the department that I mentioned earlier. All of our city contracts that have um, goals on them where our certified firms are working on them. This division is monitoring them and making sure that everything is in compliance. So looking at prevailing wage and compliance with the EEO. They also conduct site visits and they come on the, the actual construction uh, project and do interviews with the employees to make to make sure everything is being followed according to what was in that contract. So all the information that I gave to you today can also be found on our website here and it's called Procurement 101. Here's the, the website address. An easy way to get to it though is just to go to our website, houstontx.gov OBO. You will see it on the left-hand panel. It's the only thing that is in red. And that is a step-by-step -step video training on demand that you can go through that will walk you through the entire process of doing business with the city. So I gave you a quick overview of it. And if you wanna take your time and go through it, that training will definitely help you. All you gotta do is put in your email address and the training starts right up. So I also wanted to leave you with some important websites, of course, ours, as well as the purchasing.houstontx.gov, the website I tell you must be able to say it as fast as I do because it is very prominent and very um, helpful to you in doing business with the city, as well as general services and airport and Houston Public Works websites as well. Lastly, I want to bring your attention to an event that's coming up December 1st, 2022. It is our annual Meet the Buyer Procurement Forum. All of our major buying departments that I explained to you earlier will be there. So remember, if you recall what I said, anytime those departments are going to be at an event and you supply goods and services according to what they purchase, you want to be there because they don't come out that often. So you'll be able to network with them as well as with prime contractors who are looking to work with subcontractors. We'll also have um, networking opportunities. We got some special things lined up this year regarding networking, as well as you'll be able to engage in one-on-one -on -one sessions. We'll also have folks like the MBDA. I haven't asked y'all yet, but y'all- We will be asking. there. We will absolutely be there. <laughs> So we'll have everyone who supports you in doing and provides resources in you doing contracting and government procurement space will be there. So it's going to be a really good time. And uh, if you've been the last, I want to say, what, three years, I change it up every year. So I'm changing it up this year. So you have to come and see what I'm going to do different this time. And so uh, registration for Meet the Buyer will begin, uh, be open in October. And so feel free to connect with us on our social media where we have announcements. Um, we have news and, and things about what we're going, what we're doing, what's going on and what's going on with some of our partners as well. Uh, you can connect with us on any of those mediums that you're most comfortable with. Also want to point out our YouTube page has a plethora of videos of workshops that we've done. So if you have questions about uh, after you get certified, what do I do next? There's a video that goes over that. There's a video about our certification. So all that can be found on our website. We try to be an open book so that you can get the information uh, at your fingertips. So with that, that concludes my presentation and I am open for any questions that anyone may have. Thank you so much. Oh my goodness, we are on information overload. Thank you so much, Portia. Um, of course, we have questions in the chat. So I am going to turn it over to my team. I'm going to ask Tanya and uh, Deidre to start uh, taking the questions from the chat um, uh, in these moments we have left, and they will take it from here. Okay, Tanya? That's the first quick question. I believe you might have answered this, but it says, hello, how do we search for P-card solicitations? So P-card solicitations, it does not exist. Um, only because P cards are less than $3,000, that is done through having a relationship directly with that department. So you will not see anything where P cards solicitations um, are listed because there are no formal solicitations for it. Only in formal bids, RFPs and formal bids are going to be public uh, on our websites. Okay. 
Um, someone inquired about how to be become approved Hire Houston first, or is it part of the city of Houston certification? It is not a part of the city of Houston certification. The Hire Houston first is considered a designation. If you go to our website on houstontx.gov slash OBO, at the top, you will see Hire Houston first. Click on that and that will take you to the application to apply for Hire Houston first. And just to add, the Hire Houston first is a pretty quick application, so it won't take that long. Okay. Um, would would advertising services be submitted um, the same way? I I think they really want to know how does advertising services fall in your procurement process? Okay. So if we're talking about uh, if you wanted to work for the smaller purchases, like for the P card, you could, you're totally fine with submitting, you know, if you have a catalog of information, you want to submit it as far as mail it, email it, you can definitely do that. As far as advertising, if you're talking about, can I set up an appointment to sit down with the buyer on a million dollar contract and tell them about my services? We don't do that. But okay. if you, um, but yeah, but you can um, definitely send in catalogs if you want the departments to know about your services, flyers, you can definitely uh, mail those, email those as well. Okay. Here's a question. How long does it take to become certified? Okay. So that's a, it depends question. So the uh, <laughs> uh, certification typically runs about six months. I've seen it done quicker, but it, it typically runs about six months. We do encourage people to attend the pre-certification workshops that happen every first and third Tuesday of the month. Why? Because during those workshops, they tell you every single thing that you need, all the documents that you need and how to upload those documents for your application. We found that when people attend the pre-certification workshop, they have less trouble because you have to consider that if you submit the application and something is wrong, the reviewer has to then send you an email. You have to check your email, get that information and send it back. So when you are sending back that information, they've moved on to the next person on the list. So that can delay your process if they have to keep emailing you and asking you for more information. If you attend that pre-certification workshop, you know exactly what they want, how you want it, how they want it. You can submit your application and you can go through a lot quicker. And so it also, um, your folks that I've seen done in like two months are going to be more of like your consulting services. If you have a complex business or construction business, something like that, it, it's going to go to the range of the average, which is about six months. Thank you. Okay, we have another one. It's just um, they want to know where they fall in your procurement cycle. One, one participant um, does petroleum products like diesel, gasoline, oil and loops. That's a different kind of business. So they want to know, I'm not understanding what they're asking. Okay. I would like to know what kind of bids will be used for a company that specializes in providing petroleum products like diesel, gasoline, oils, and loops. Okay. So that's probably going to go on um, informal or formal bids. At okay. that website, purchasing.houstontx.gov, it's going to list all the informal, all the formal, and all the RFPs on that one page. So if they just go there, I tell people, pick a day out of the week and just make sure that you check the bids and see what's out there every week. But yeah, that's probably going to go up for bid. It's not going to be something with the P-card. Okay. Here's a question. Some bids require small businesses to show a number of years of experience working for the city of or government. Is the experience working for the private sector useful in any case? And what to do to be able to bid in those bidding processes? So what's on that bid is what they are requiring. 
So if it requires that you be in business for five years, then you have to be in business for five years to be considered for that bid. If it says that you need uh, two years or two projects of government, then you have to have two projects of uh, working with the government to be considered for that bid. That bid is, is, is typically not a leeway. What, what they require in that bid is exactly what they want. Okay, uh, how much time do we have? How many questions left? Uh, we have about nine minutes left and you have. Um, how, did you, how, did they, how did they sign up for your OBO blast? Um, you can go to the website at uh, OBOSC at HoustonTX.gov and submit your name company name and the email address that you wanted to go to, or you can always send me an email with that information and we'll get you added. Deirdre, did you ask the question from Nina Vasquez in the chat at 1202? Um, oh, I'd have to look it up. I was, there's so many. Um, Nina? Oh. Mm -hmm. Uh, Nina, hi everyone. I'm Nina Vasquez and own a small business market strategy business. This was very helpful information, especially the research. Thank you so much. I assume I should begin as a subcontractor and should attend the pre bid meetings and grow my network with primes. Is that accurate? That is accurate, Nina. <laughs> she was listening. Absolutely. Was. Absolutely. <laughs> Okay. Are the pre certification workshops posted again? If you go to our website, HoustonTX.gov slash OBO at the top, you'll see certifications. You click on there, scroll down almost to the end, and they'll have a heading pre certifications workshops, and you can uh, register for uh, one of those there. Uh, just to add, the one on the first Tuesday is virtual only. The one on the third Tuesday, you can have a choice between to attend virtually or here in person. Uh, Dr. J, um, here's a question from a Crystal Beatty. Um, she is uh, a nurse and owner of My Fresh Fusions. Uh, she offers a convenience of healthy meal preps, catering, and nutritional classes and education. Which department uh, would she do you suggest? Uh, that she focused on? Health department and HR. Okay. Health and HR, Crystal Beatty. <laughs> Here's a question, Dr. J. Hello, my name is Tara Daniels, and I am an owner of Tarashi Logistics LLC Trucking Company. I wanted to know if there's a particular reason why I am receiving solicitations that don't match my current NAICS codes. So you want to check, one, where, who are you receiving them from? If you're receiving them directly from the city site, then you want to make sure that you go into your vendor profile and see if they're, for some reason, those NIGP codes that don't apply to you could be listed under yours. So you want to make sure you go there and, and check that profile. Two, if you're talking about our e-blast, our e-blast lists all of the bids that are out there. And I say that because some folks confuse our e-blast with what the NIGP coded solicitations that come from the SPD department. And then uh, Dr. J, someone who has a wellness chair massage business, uh, would they go to the same department? Um, health and I would just say health department for that health. one. Okay. Alrighty. So, Valicia Weeks, uh, you would go to the health department. Right. I had several of them that were in um, trucking, look like hauling businesses. That, but that falls under construction, correct? For the most part, yeah, only when there's um, 
Yeah, it will still be listed as construction. Rarely would it be listed under <clears throat> goods and services. Typically with those hauling trucks, it's it's under construction. Okay, thank you. Here's a great question. Uh, what if there's no bid for an item? Can we pitch products for consideration in the absence of an RFP? That is a very good question. I would say you would need to reach out to the director of that department and see if that's something that is coming down the pipeline. Typically, most departments don't accept meetings with folks who just have ideas and say, hey, we want to, we have solar panels and we want the city to use solar panels. So we want to tell you about solar panels. Um, what you can do again, going back to when those particular departments of something that who would buy it. So if you are selling solar panels and you notice that there are no bids out for the solar panels and there's never been a bid out for the solar panels, right? Because I want to make sure that you understand just because there's not a bid out, the contract could have already been awarded. So there's no opportunity for it, right? At that particular moment. But if you've never seen when you do your research, a bid for solar panels, that's a good time that when you come to places where like SPD is going to be at meet the buyer, you say, I don't, I see that there's no solar panels. Is there, can I set up a time to you to talk to talk to you about solar panels? And then they can tell you either we're considering or we've considered it and we're not interested at all. Then you have your answer. Um, but most departments don't take pitch meetings. Okay. All righty. So it's safe to say in conclusion that uh, utilizing your research tools will be able to find exactly what the city procures and get names and contacts of who procured them so that we can follow through um, with the same steps. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. And just so people understand with the city, when the city is ready to buy, they put out those bids. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Well, I think we have gotten to, I hope we've gotten to all of them. Um, okay. Although so, last again, one, will the webinar be made available? Yes. 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 Okay. We will absolutely make it available. Okay. So thank you so much again, Dr. PJ. Uh, again, we have truly received a great deal of information, a lot of helpful and useful information. Uh, and yes, we will certainly uh, be with you at Meet the Buyer. We are always astounded uh, at and amazed at what you come up with each year. So yes, we will certainly be there to support. I uh, look forward to it. So please send us the information. Um, and thank you so much again for today. This was absolutely amazing. You are absolutely phenomenal. You always do such a great job explaining uh, the city of Houston's processes. And for that, we are thankful. So thank you so much. You're welcome. My pleasure. Absolutely. All right, everybody. Thank you so much to our attendees, all 115 of you. <laughs> My goodness, this was Oh, yeah, yeah, this was one of our larger subs and sandwiches. So, uh, Dr. PJ, you had your work cut out for you today. So thank you all so much attendees. We appreciate you and we hope we answered your questions. Thank you all for attending. We look forward to you joining us next month for our final subs and sandwiches of this fiscal year, uh, where J.E. Dunn construction will be our uh, special guest. Thank you all so much. Have a phenomenal rest of your day and we look forward to seeing you next month. Thank you.